minutes, but before that, since all of y'all are young and so incredibly enthusiastic, uh, I'm sure you all all have smartphones, so this is a good time to whip them out and start tweeting, start Facebooking. The fact that you're here this, you know, rather early for a Monday morning at a talk about textiles, um, and really spread the word. It's it's great that everyone's here, and now you know, let's spread the word. Let's tweet Facebook. I mean, you know, it's uh, like at Lakme Fashion WK on Twitter. You can follow them. Um, you can follow a whole bunch of people like Ekta, Sujata, all of you who are tweeting quite regularly. Uh, so please share the, you know, share whatever you learn here online so that those who aren't here as well uh, can be part of this. We'll start in, we, we're, we're ready to start. So bef welcome. Um, we want to go straight into the conversation because we have an hour and we have a lot to discuss with you. But before we begin, um, Ritu, as the first member of the Indian fashion fraternity to win a Padma Shri, we'd like to honor you by asking Ragini Auja, a Zoe Gen X designer, to present you with the sari that she's made. <laughs> so, come. Between the past and the present and the future. Thank you, Ragini. It's, a, it's beautiful. So the way we're going to structure this conversation this morning is very simple. I'm going to ask each of our panelists one question that I want them to, to answer. We'll go through each of those. Then I'll ask Mayank. Where's Mayank? I hope he's in the audience somewhere. I'll ask Mayank. Uh, a question Mayank has curated the next, the show that starts Textile Day today. I'll ask him one question. But then we really want it to be participatory. We want to have you ask questions. We want to have a conversation between all of us. Um, and I think that will be meaningful, interesting, and hopefully we'll get a lot out of it. Um, and all of us will also learn from you uh, in the process. So Ritu, I want to start by asking you the first question. Um, you won a Padma Shri. I think it should have come 10 years earlier, but better late than never. Um, uh, you've had this incredible life with textiles, uh, you know, starting with when you began your process on archiving. I remember a conversation some years ago, you told me how, you know, with, with, with Martan, with Pupul Jaikar, with individuals like that, you, you took off, you know, on one stage you were going into India's villages and in a sense discovering our traditions. On the other, you were going to museums in Europe because we didn't have any, any archives of textiles in India. So you began, you know, you began on that incredible with this charged feeling of, 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 of learning. And then you moved into revival with Zardozi and all the work. And again, you, in a sense, you pioneered the whole ecosystem which had died. You, 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 you revitalized it and you created a new crafts ecosystem. And then in your third stage with retail, with what you've been doing, you know, with Pret over the years. I, I wonder if you can begin this conversation by, by reflecting on some turning points in the past few years as you, as you, as you've gone on this journey, and also with you know maybe one or two points of inspiration that you can inspire the students and everyone else who's here on. Good morning. It really is wonderful to see so many young faces here. Uh, ten years back, if I was giving this talk, perhaps the cycle hadn't turned enough for it to have been as full as it is today. And I really do welcome all of you to come. And I want to share part of my journey with you. And I think uh, the basis of this journey really starts from one very small word, it's not very small, but actually it is confidence. Uh, we are sitting in a country where actually we can be very proudly confident of a huge textile heritage. Uh, this is not true of many countries. As a matter of fact, it's true of very few. Uh, not that other countries have not had craft traditions. They have had China, for instance, but they belong to the older uh, civilizations. They do not really belong to a mechanized age as much as they do to our historical perspective in India. Having said that, we are also uh, part of the heritage of a country which actually a, discovered patterning on cotton, patterning on any fabric. 
And it was the skill of this patterning which made India one of the largest countries for export of fabrics to the whole world. Uh, till recently, let's say America, where we sent our cotton scarves to, but prehistorically even to Egypt, to Indonesia, and we were also a country which continued customizing. We are an amazing uh, technique and history of customizing for various countries, for various climates, for various societies, for different traditions. So there is not only a skill level, but there is a craft level, and there is also huge innovation within our genetic structure as people, as far as textiles are concerned. Now, I think if you go with that confidence that you do need to look at an international platform, you do need to look at changing lifestyles all over the world, but you do need to have a that confidence that you are coming from a base which is perhaps the richest in the world. The second point that I do want to make to you as designers is our base is not only hugely historic, but our base depends upon almost, I think, 16 million people today who are actually working in textile crafts as a means of livelihood. Our crafts are not in a situation that they're not in an atelier, they're not in a studio like most crafts are all over the world. You have a situation of living crafts. And I'm not even being romantic about this because the romance would say that all these people are actually not having great livelihoods. They should all be looking at a computer instead of looking at a loom. But the fact of the matter is you have a highly skilled population who is working at these looms, at these embroideries, at these printing, as creating these blocks. And so this is not a population which is out there breaking stones. There are a highly skilled uh, number of people who are almost your own contemporaries in terms of fashion and textile design. And I would urge you to actually use that resource because A, it comes from within your own psyche, and B, I think it is something that the world is going to miss. We have a hugely environmental friendly space here with our textiles, which the world has lost. And I think that confidence not only should come from you as a design community, but also confidence of being able to absorb what you produce as a country. We've gone through our cycle of uh, looking at every ramp show that was in Paris and Milan. And uh, as a matter of fact, the whole world has got one Eurocentric fashion handwriting. Uh, we do have a country which I'm really very pleasantly surprised to see over the last 15 years that we have pulled out from an indigenous root of fashion handwriting, which is very rare in the world. I don't know of any other country, uh, unless it's hugely supported by the government, like Japan or somebody, where they have a designer which comes from their own root. The whole uh, process of selling design or fashion to the world, whole world is so highly economically worked around by the media internationally, that most indigenous designers don't have a chance. We've had a history where for 40 years, I know when I started my work, I couldn't import a button or a zip, so we had to do with uh, you know, putting threads together and cords and so on and so forth. So you've had that space to grow in. And today you're having a lot of competition that is coming. But I think you are because you've had this history in a space where you can not only compete with it, but create your own niche. And I would urge you to deal with your heritage with this confidence. Thank you, Rupa. I think what you spoke about having your fashion handwriting, you know, really makes, it's, 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 so, it's so poignant. And I want to ask, I want to take that to you, Sangeeta, because you, over the years, have been having your own, in a sense, when I think of you, I think of, how people do mirror handwriting, right? You've been doing this, you've been writing in two mirrors. On one side, you've been writing in this mirror of documentation, of cultural revival, whether through the Morarka Foundation, whether through uh, the Sihai Mantles of Myth Conference, at which you know, we were there, which, which, which spoke about you know, textiles and narrative stories behind textiles, whether with the incredible conferences you've done on the Northeast and so on. You know, it seems like that's, that's the handwriting in one mirror. 
On the other side, you've had this handwriting as a, as a, as a retail pioneer with Melange, with the kind of designers that you've consistently showcased, um, with the kind of buyers that you've created in your stores over the years. So my question to you is, have these been, have these been completely separate worlds? Do you see the work that you do in terms of conservation, in terms of having an intellectual conversation around textiles and around our crafts heritage in the country? Do you see it seep into the retail world, um, say when you do Malkha, when you do exhibitions on Malkha or so on? Or do you find that buyers who come to your store you know, are from another planet and the people who come to your conferences are from another planet and they don't meet anywhere? So I, I, I wonder if you can probe this for me. Thank you, Parmesh, for asking this wonderful question. And I will try and stick as much to that question and give the reply. At this start, I feel really pleased and honored to share this podium with a stalwart like Ms. Ritu Kumar, and also young Gaurav, who will take this forward, the next generation who we count upon to take our work forward. And thank you all in the audience who took the trouble to be here early on a Monday morning. It just inspires us more and probably keeps the faith going that we should be working harder, so thank you. There's lots to share on what we are discussing today, but because of the time constraints, I'll stay exactly with what Parmesh has put forward the question. And yes, it's been a very tough ride for last 25 years to try and bridge the gap between the intellectual side of fashion and the user side of the actual user side of the fashion. So to play an academician's role and to convert it into the active role has been difficult and challenging, but greatly rewarding. So at no point I have felt that why, why were we trying to do what we were doing. It's been um, ex uh, nourishing, nurturing, and has not entirely been different in a commercial space as in a creative space. Because I think that very often intellectually and creatively we sit in our little studio and are removed from what is the commercial responsibility for our creativity? And if a creative person really wants to reach out to the world, then they have this huge responsibility which they cannot shut their door to. So it's been very challenging when we have dealt with really t talented young designers who have a humongous amount of talent which could have been on international platforms earlier than what it is today, is simply because they thought commerce was a dirty word. Because in their creative world, they were probably told that, you know, creativity stops at your door and you want to reach out. Yes, I can understand if I want to create beautiful things in my own studio and I don't want to reach out to another audience, then I could stay with it indoors. So to answer what you actually ask is, is the client who is visiting the, visiting the store totally in a different world? I wish I could say that, but I'm very happy to share that they are not. More and more, as you can see from this audience response, more and more people want to know. More and more people are eager to study. There are courses in art and aesthetics where they are discussing textile traditions. There are courses in fashion schools where they are going back to the roots. More and more interest in the contemporary world for the tribal heritage of our country. Even the contemporary art collectors 